It is almost 2 in the morning and the rumble of the truck's engine is still powering along, piercing the silence along the dark roads. Only the yellow flickering lights along the highway remind you that you're still on the road. Nothing can be seen around you. Nothing can be seen behind you. And the limits of the headlights are all you can see in front of you as the road turns to the right once again. The radio appears to have stopped working. The static can find a few words here and there. It's about special orders and phone number to a service you don't care about. It's here when you decide to shut down the radio and instead concentrate on simply getting through the pass. That's when you realize that off into the distance, a distinct figure can be seen standing on the side of the road. You had not passed by any other cars or trucks. And the nearest thing that resembled a house must have been about half an hour behind you now. California typically isn't that cold that late at night. But during this time of the year, near the end of the summer, the temperature would drop more than normal, especially around these areas. You begin to slow down, knowing that the load of the truck behind you will make stopping a bit more difficult. As you get closer, you begin to see the silhouette move from the side of the road toward the middle of it. It appears to be glowing against your headlights. It wobbles and crouches down. What type of animal, you think to yourself, as you slow down even more? trying to adjust your eyes to the darkness even as you flick on your high beams. But it isn't until you're less than 20 yards away that you realize that the thing in the middle of the road isn't anything you have ever seen before. It turns its head up and extends its wings. A large creature with feathers far too large to be a bird but with human-like features. It begins to flap its wings toward your windshield as it lets out a terrifying shriek. Your truck then comes to a complete stop as you look above you through your windshield. What did you see? You sit there for a moment before you convince yourself to look over to the left side of the truck. Convince yourself of being too tired to make sense of what you're seeing. A half-man, half-bird creature looking right at you. The reports have mentioned it before. Creatures, ghosts, and the dark history behind one of the most haunted areas in California. One that is filled with death, darkness, and unexplained phenomena. Welcome to California State Route 152, through the Pacheco Pass. In California. My name is Edwin, and here is a dark memory. One of the largest landowners in Monterey County was a man born in 1790 named Francisco Perez Pacheco. And if his last name rings a bell, it's because many areas, parks, and even the Pacheco Pass that this episode is about are named after him. He was a soldier and a public figure and received many land grants, including this one, the Pacheco Pass. If you were to simply look at the area, you'd consider it a regular piece of land. It is a low mountain pass with an elevation of around 400 meters. The pass is 106 miles long and is located in an area known as Diablo Range. The name seems appropriate. Today, you can locate it through the southeastern Santa Clara County in California, and it is the main route through the hills between Santa Clara Valley and Central Valley. As a matter of fact, this was a common drive for me back in 2013 and 2015, and it is how I came to learn about this area. I always felt there was something strange about those long drives in the middle of the night. It wasn't until I started learning about it that I realized just how bizarre it truly is. In the late 1800s, the area was known as Robber's Pass because of two highwaymen that would frequent the area to rob, rape, and murder travelers. Today, the area is also known as Blood Alley because of the many traffic accidents that have occurred there. 
The trail that runs through Pacheco State Park was used by the Yokuts people to cross the mountains and trade with other native people. It was first put on paper in 1805. In general, this area is tough to cross, but there are very few alternatives. Today, it's commonly used by those going from the Bay Area to the Central Valley in California and vice versa. They say that in the 1700s, massacres occurred by the Spanish settlers. The history doesn't stop there. As you will soon find out, the many stories that surround this area will make you want to skip your trip altogether. Through one of the local publications, the Gilroy Dispatch, a story of a psychic who was traveling along the Pacheco Pass stands out as an experience. You may have heard of her. Her name is Sylvia Brown. She was on the road with her husband, Dal, driving past the San Luis Dam, and she started to feel something strange. Powerful emotions began to run through her body. That's when she started to see images of what appeared to be a little girl in a covered wagon, just as a wagon train was being attacked. She could see images of battles between Spaniards, Mexican, and American settlers. She was visibly disturbed and even suffered from a panic attack. Were her images some type of memory of the terrible things that happened in the area long ago? Was she looking at the spirit world? be. You see, the Pacheco Pass has been flooded with reports of sightings of ghostly figures and even phantom trucks. The woman happened to be walking along the side of the highway one evening through the hills and dry brush of the surrounding areas. Behind her, a semi-truck was driving at full speed and through a minor distraction, she was struck and the woman died immediately. Now reports of a truck driving past other drivers along with a panicked woman screaming from the passenger side window can be heard. However, right when she gets your attention, her and the phantom truck vanish into thin air. As you drive through the dark two-way road, you see a figure on there. A woman dress in Victorian clothing, roaming around and turning her head off to the sides as you approach her. That's when you begin to hear the thunder of the stagecoaches, the strange sounds of the horses unlike any you have ever heard before. They say that this woman fits the description of the legend of the Victorian woman, the one who roams at the side of the highway forever searching for her child. The following story is more of a personal one and one that inspired, at least in part, the creation of this episode. A close family member is a truck driver, and he and those that work with him used to make constant drives along the Pacheco Pass, and most, if not all, of the drivers have an eerie story somehow linked to it. With good reason, too. The area, as mentioned before, has become known for its traffic accidents, so warnings about slow traffic or an emergency operation happening in the area are common alerts that drivers get to either avoid the route or be prepared to wait. Several times, drivers alert others of things that appear out of this world. He told me about an encounter that still has not left me. The sun was not going to come up for another couple of hours and he was hard at work, heading up toward the bay area following a delivery at a Sprouts Market. The engine was humming in front of him, with the occasional brake air release as the truck made its way through Highway 152. Then, up ahead, on the side of the road, what appears to be a person crosses and stands on the right side, waiting for the truck. Now, there are many incidents that are far too graphic to describe that truck drivers see, but it's always good practice to either slow down or move over a lane whenever there is a stopped vehicle on the shoulder of the road. And that's what he did. He flicked on the turn signals, changed lanes, and then slowed down as he approached a woman on the side of the road, not carrying anything with her. 
He slowed down, pulled over, and watched through the mirror as the young woman walks over to the passenger side of the semi-truck. The mirrors lose track of her as she gets closer, so he steps over to the passenger seat and ready to roll down the window, and then ask if she needed help with something, as hitchhikers are not that uncommon in the mountain areas of Northern California. Some people still like to experience the outdoors in that manner. But in the middle of the night, alone, and without any hiking gear or even a backpack, he looked out the window and decided to lower it, but neither the mirrors nor the lights from the side of the truck could spot her. He stepped over to the window on the driver's side, which had been lowered just a little bit to get some air. But when he looked outside, there was no one there. Again, truck drivers have seen many things out on the road, so he suspected that perhaps she had hidden somewhere underneath a trailer, or had gotten inside. So he grabbed his phone and his flashlight, just in case, and opened the door. But once he stepped down and locked the doors, he looked out over the trailer. He realized that there was nowhere else for the young woman to go. The specific area had a few trees that were far away, no other soul could be seen for miles. The back door of the trailer was sealed shut with no signs of foul play. He scanned underneath the trailer and walked all the way around the vehicle. But there was no one around. He climbed back in the truck and looked around his bunk bed and even opened up the tiny closet compartment just to be safe. But he eventually realized that he was likely the only other person in the area at that time in the middle of the night. The notice he sent out to the dispatch was mixed with confusion and a bit of fear as he admitted when he told me the story, but nothing could compare with the feeling of validation that he felt when he was asked if he was in the Pacheco Pass, which he promptly confirmed. The phone call went silent for a bit, but then the dispatcher mentioned that he should simply lock his doors and keep driving, that it had not been the first time such an encounter had been described to him and his co-workers. The legend says that a young girl was struck and killed by a semi-truck, and her spirit can now be spotted roaming that section of Highway 152. Up next, we have even more tales of ghosts that roam the Pacheco Pass. <laughs> Journalist Tom Keller was driving his old car over the Pacheco Pass back in 1998, according to an article that he wrote in 2011 for the Union News for Nevada City. He was making the trip as he was falling asleep between the area of Santa Anella and Watsonville just after midnight. It was then when a bright light, something that he described as the sun coming out in the middle of the night, illuminated the surrounding landscape. For about 10 seconds, the light made it look like daytime and he could see everything around him. And the night came once again. Shaking and obviously nervous over the situation, he pulled over to the side of the road, wondering if he should call somebody. Confused, he started doubting what he had actually seen. But it was after some time when he got a call from an artist named Gloria Beth Edwards from Nevada County, seeing that she wanted to talk about an experience that she had more than 40 years before the interview. This intrigued Tom Keller and decided to write a piece about it. According to the article, Gloria had been living in Nevada County since the early 1970s and became known as a wilderness artist, whose work had been admired by President Ronald Reagan. Tom visited the 80-year-old's home for the interview and it was then when she told him about her experience. Quote, Back in 1965, I got off of work at Harvey's Wagon Wheel in South Lake Tahoe and a chum who rode to work with me and I went up to Kingsbury to go home after midnight and, all of a sudden, the sky lit up. She continues, I thought that maybe there had been an explosion or a fire. We kept going for about a block and then saw this thing come over the mountains. It lit everything up like one of those torches used for welding. It came right at us and I thought it was going to hit us. 
The terrifying story led her to draw out what she had seen so that she wouldn't forget about it, but decided not to tell anybody in fear of losing her job. According to her interview, people back then used to do that sort of thing if you started seeming a bit crazy talking about UFOs and flying saucers. Enough to get fired. Just a few days later, though, Gloria heard from an airman that he had witnessed a strange occurrence over the Pacific Ocean. It had been a UFO that came out of nowhere. They tried to get photographs, but the bright light had disappeared. Gloria simply listened, refusing to talk about her own experience at the time until this interview with Tom Keller. Strange lights around the area are just another odd phenomenon that the locals and those crossing the Pacheco Pass talk about. But perhaps even more strange is the phenomenon of time skipping or time warping. It is true what they say, however. The route as you cross the Pacheco Pass is scenic. The roads themselves do not seem to be the safest, at least to me. Two-way roads sometimes passing dangerously close to other vehicles in twists and turns are not for the faint of heart. But what is strange is that many travelers have reported unexplained terrors as they drive along. And some have experienced that the many miles that it takes to cross the Pacheco Pass have only taken a few minutes. Just like the case on another episode of Barney and Betty Hill and their alien abduction, could it be possible that otherworldly entities are picking off drivers and their passengers, experimenting on them, and then returning the confused humans back to the road without any recollection of it happening? A local monk was sitting on the courtyard of the very mission he helped found, known as La Misión San Juan Bautista, back during the times when the missionaries were building the missions all along California. Times were strange as the state was still being inhabited by the natives of California, and the relationships between the settlers had to be adjusted between them. The sun was setting after a hard day of work, and even the Native Americans who worked with the day-to-day -day task with the mission, with things like cleaning, cooking, taking care of the animals, and washing clothes, were all heading back to their sleeping areas. But for this monk, things were different. You see, he had fallen in love with a young girl from there, and they began meeting secretly on a hill besides Fremont's Peak, not far from the area of the Pacheco Pass. Obviously, this was against the rules, so everything had to be kept in secret. However, it did not take long for the townspeople to find out, and now the monk had to deal with the consequences of his actions. The monk was excommunicated from the church, and as for the girl, she was banished from the tribe completely. Heartbroken and hopeless, the monk hurried over to their meeting spot on the hill to be together just one more time. His heart was racing with fear and excitement as he climbed up the grassy hill, the views behind him becoming clearer with every step that he took. The young girl would be waiting for him. But when he arrived, his heart stopped. The young girl was dead. He knelt beside her as his heart went cold and heavy with sadness. Two souls meeting at the wrong place and at the wrong time. His heart couldn't take it anymore and without seeing any other purpose to his own life, he took it. Today, travelers claim to see a man in a black robe on the side of the road, while others have said that both spirits still frequent their meeting spot on that hill, where they can be with each other. Finally. The section of the road that goes through the Pacheco Pass is a single-lane highway in each direction, and crossing it at night has not fared well with sleepy drivers who are trying to get back home and who have no alternatives but to go through it. Unfortunately, this has led them to cross over onto incoming traffic and meeting their untimely death in that manner. 
Such was the case of a man who was driving in that section of Route 152 who was in a car accident and did not make it out alive. He was about to get married, and upon learning about the tragedy, his fiance put on the wedding dress and went to the scene of the accident. The heartbreak was too much for her to bear, and in an area after a small grove of trees where there is an outcropping of rocks, she started climbing. She climbed and climbed without a care in the world about ruining her dress and about her own life. Through tears and cries, she looked down and jumped. She died instantly. Today, in that area, reports come in every once in a while of a woman roaming around in her wedding dress, floating through the darkness. As you drive through California State Route 152, your mind begins to drift away from the double yellow lines as they twist and turn against the black asphalt. You imagine the historic trails that surround the areas. For many people who cross over the mountains with dreams of better lives, generations before you were born. For those who endured the cold, the dark, the ghosts of those who came before them. Your mind begins to play games on you once more, with the strange silhouettes walking, barely taking notice of you as you pass alongside them. The hitchhikers, the monk, the large creature with wings. And into the distance you're convinced that your eyes are playing tricks on you as you see a pair of lights up ahead. Your heart begins to beat faster. Your hands gripped the steering wheel. The stories were true. You suddenly hear the thud, thud, thud of the highway against your tires, and you see a strong pair of headlights in front of you, honking. You open your eyes wide and move over to your lane once again. It was close. This episode of A Dark Memory was researched by Madeline Guerra and written and produced by me, Edwin Comarrubias. 